Hello to all the energy and mobility innovators out there watching today. My name is Gianluca Corbellini. I'm the CEO of Hive Power. And today I'm very happy that we have joining us Wolf Schlachter, who is the CEO uh, from uh, DXP Management. Uh, I would like to introduce Wolf, but Wolf, you had so many roles, so, so much a big experience. It's so much better if you can just tell us uh, shortly um, what you did in the past 10 years about electric mobility. It's very, very relevant to the industry. Hi, Gianluca. Uh, well, uh, thanks a lot for the invite. And uh, yeah, you're right. I did a lot <laughs> of, of funny things in the last 10 years. But let it summarize. Um, well, my name is Wolf Schlachter. I'm CEO of DXBE Management. We are a consultancy and project management company based in Hamburg. With more than 17 locations worldwide, we have uh, lots of uh, consultants as well as project managers working on different fields. So on one hand side, IoT based topics. On the other side, we are doing a lot in, in mobility and especially in EV charging. And uh, well, from building large charger parks uh, on the one hand side to software on the other side. So we have audited more than roughly, well, 60 different companies worldwide, uh, which provides backend systems. Uh, and so far, I would say we are one of the few independent players in the market who can give advice or give you, well, let's say, helps uh, where to fix. Or if you have some problems, we also can fix these uh from from the doing side so that's part of my business um <laughs> yeah just founded a company in new zealand a few weeks ago oh, and cool. uh while well, the market is booming there as well or coming up to boom and so far we are always a little bit ahead of let's say the the typical uh hockey stick when he comes or starts so we know how it works and uh, that's uh, our our latest uh, let's say development what we have done yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally see this. Like um, electric vehicle deployment will be a classic exponential growth where you typically um, overestimate it at the at the beginning, but when it really kicks in, uh, it will. You're underestimating what is going to happen, and there will be some consequences in the market, I think. But let's see. So my first question would be um, really related about this: How do you forecast the evolution of the electric vehicle market? Uh, in the next three to five years. I know it's very difficult because we have many uh, things happening globally, which are related to energy, manufacturing, but what's yeah. your perspective, your well, or from what you can imagine in the short Yeah, you, you have already mentioned it. Uh, we have lack of, uh, of components uh, from the sensors to whatever. Uh, but what I haven't heard uh, until now is a lack of battery. So this is positive. If you're going into, yeah. let's say, the, the e-mobility and the activities, what we see that uh, the main markets uh, have started to, let's say, disrupt itself away from the diesel to, to the electric vehicles. And this will continue, I would say, until 2025 and 26, when the first uh, European OEMs uh, start to, to stop, let's say, the production of, um, of uh, non-electric vehicles or non, let's say, also um, yeah, <laughs> non-diesel and 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 benzene-driven uh, cars. So from that point, um, I think this is a the trend. Um, but you have seen that there are some markets quite ahead, like the Nordics, like in Norway, where you have uh, more than eighty percent of penetration yeah. right now uh, on EVs. So that's good to see that it works, and um, especially you have seen that in these markets, or also in China or in Germany. Uh, funding is elementary to to get uh, speed uh, on on the channels. That means selling cars on the one hand side and on the other side as well as um, building charge points. And charge point uh, is well needed. Otherwise, you cannot uh, drive with your car from A to B and back to to A. So from that point, uh, it's challenging. And uh, on the on the hardware side, um, well, you you already mentioned there's also a lack of components. So also critical to get transformers, for example, waiting yeah. times um, if you want to build big charger parks, as well as wall boxes. Um, <laughs> wherever you have sensors or let's say MEMS or something like that embedded in the systems, uh, it's a little bit complicated. And so far, we could be faster um, if we, do, we would not have had, uh, let's say, COVID and uh, this lack of components, uh, to be honest. Um, 
but at the moment you see that uh, hopefully we have an end of this, let's say, um, problem or a topic uh, maybe mid or end of next year. So um, it's getting better from the conditions and also the components, uh, for example, for building a factory um, where you also need these components. Um, it's it's um, yeah, it's, it's getting better slowly, but um, well, then we will see that the hockey stick model will will grow much faster, even if the OEMs can produce uh, EVs in, in more mass market uh, trends or more in the segment of, let's say, non SUV vehicles, what is currently, <laughs> of course, the, the, the favorite uh, model of selling cars or EVs. No, oh, no, definitely, definitely. And in general, what, what do you think will be um, the game changers? And also, uh, when we talk about electric vehicles, um, every, everybody's thinking about cars, but uh, buses are already happening and trucks. I really believe that trucks will be the very big thing very soon, actually. So how do you see also those, those bigger vehicle markets? Yeah, we, we started with, uh, let's say, EVs with ranges of, I would say, 300 kilometers. Now we are going to 600, uh, even much more. If you take the Lucids or even the Teslas or mm -hmm. even Mercedes with more than 1000 kilometer, well, practically maybe 800. But yeah. nevertheless, I think uh, it's going to the right direction from battery and range. On the other side, you see that there are still huge investments into infrastructure. So charging cars at home is 80% of the market. I would say, and 20% is somewhere public. Uh, even if you do not have uh, the opportunity to charge at your home or if you're living in multi-homes somewhere in downtown, yeah, New York or wherever, um, <laughs> that then it's a, it, it's a it's problem. Hard. And uh, from that point of view, I see that uh, there are lots of initiatives uh, coming up at the moment and still coming up. Also new CPOs will enter the market and uh, on, on the hardware side, uh, well, the trend is going from when I started uh, with Ionity five years ago, um, then it was something like uh, 350 kilowatts in a maximum. Uh, now we are thinking about 480 or we are talking about megawatt charging on the truck side, what you already mentioned as well. So I think the trend is going to, to uh, megawatt on the, um, on the commercial side, commercial truck. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, to be honest, at the moment, um, from from uh, electric vehicles, so let's take the Porsche Taycan or the, the Lucid Air, well, you can think about this amount of uh, electric energy uh, sending to the car, but I don't think that the, the business cases are made for that. So if you wait, let's say 15 minutes for charging uh, your EV, then it's okay. And I think even if you can reach 12 or 10, that will be possible in the future. But I don't think that the, the speeding time or the, let's say, the, the kilowatt hours, uh, which are much higher for a megawatt, for example, uh, this will, will be the, let's say, the perfect way to charge your cars, I would say. I, I don't believe in this case. I think, uh, and what we see right now, uh, after the first period of 50 kilowatt chargers in public areas, you see that these chargers are no longer, I would say, cool or requested. And uh, it's going to 150 or even 300 kilowatts as an average uh, for public charging. So uh, with a growing amount of EVs, it's necessary even to charge faster on site and even for CPOs, especially on their business model, it's more attractive to to offer high power to get more traction on on the charger than maybe four or five slow charging cars a day yes. yeah, definitely. and uh, well well for example the the customers uh with a let's say audi atron or or lucid or porsche icon or other cars kia ev6 gt so the 800 volt cars they do not have really fun to charge a car on a on a 50 kilowatt charger so to be no, honest they would always select the the higher power what we have seen right now and uh, I think this is uh, one of the, the major developments, what we see um, that, well, growing amount of chargers also means, uh, well, improvement of, of charging speeds. Um, but not, we are not talking about 500 kilowatts for, for public charging so far. Um, this is a topic for bus and commercial vehicles, of course, uh, bus and trucks, uh, where you have the need that the bus must be charged when 
he leaves the, the station or the depot. So I would say that that's a trend what we see right now uh, from that uh, perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're also entering that that vertical. Uh, we should start the pilot with um, electric buses optimization charging yeah. uh, with one of the major player and. Um, yeah, that's a very interesting um, case because, you know, some buses are, are working almost full time, let's say, like a person. But some of them, they run, they run just on the peak hours because, of course, the demand is very uh, volatile. And for them, there's a lot of room for the optimization, even for vehicle to grid, because, of course, you have to charge them oh, yeah. in DC. So by, by, by definition, because the battery is so big and the, the there's a lot of interesting uh, things you can do there. Um, and so I, I just pushing it to, to, the, to my favorite topic, which is bidirectional chargers, because I think they open a lot of um, opportunities, okay. also yeah. for energy companies. It's a very big ecosystem. Uh, so how do you see the, the penetration in, in the future? Because, you know, today bidirectional chargers are not common at all, uh, also bidirectional cars. Uh, or cars that allow you already today to, to do bidirectional things are very few, uh, but I think it's, it's growing crazy. This is will, will be really the hockey, yep. crazy hockey stick. So, so how do you see the, the evolution of V2G or even AC uh, V2G? Yeah. yeah, so from from that point of view, it's an interesting topic because uh, the vehicle to grid is, is, is not a topic which uh, is, is quite, I would say, young or um, well, we had this years ago already with the first testings, uh, not with the cars, but uh, battery and, and PV, uh, photovoltaics and so on. So from that point of view, it's an extension to, to charging uh, what we see right now. And uh, well, discussing with OEMs um, years ago, uh, three, four years ago, it was not a topic because, well, everyone was thinking about home charging, slow charging at home, well, you know, lots of cars, but um, the the business model was not quite clear. Uh, and many thought about, well, we can do bi-directional uh, from on the OEM side, but then we need at least uh, 50 kilowatt AC, where it makes fun for us, or we have, let's say, a higher, let's say, attraction or can offer uh, better business models. But on the other side, you know, for example, that um, an AC 50 kilowatt wall box it's roughly something <laughs> like 3,000 euros. And if you can buy uh, a wall box for 400 euros or 500, I would say an 11 kilowatt, then mm. it's a question of the business model so far. And this was one one uh, hindrance or hurdle uh, in the past. What we have seen uh, right now in, in this context that there are some players coming up with, with the platforms behind um, and offering, let's say, kind of an end-to-end -end ecosystem on that. So combining it with battery storage, combining it with photovoltaics, combining it with energy and load management functionalities. And it's important what you, you already mentioned and what's your home turf so far as well. Mm -hmm. I think there is a, a big opportunity. From my point of view, in the consumer segment, yes, but I see currently more challenges on the or better opportunities uh, if you operate with big cars or big trucks with larger batteries where you have more, well, let's say, opportunity uh, to take energy away and send it back within time. So fast charging cars or fast charging buses and trucks are more attractive for a business model like V2G um, and even becoming a kind of a energy broker if you are operating as a CTO then I would say that that's a topic what we see right now. Um, and I would say that we will see the first um, not only use cases in the market. So proof of concept, what we have just seen from some uh, manufacturers also on the mm -hmm. on the OEM side, like Kia and Hyundai, what they have announced uh, a few days ago and uh, doing some testings. I would say that we will see uh, real models in, in well beginning or mid of next year. Uh, coming up uh, where these V2G and vehicle to home activities will be more attractive given to, to end customers as it is right now. So currently you have to select your pieces, uh, bring it somehow together and um, <laughs> well, there, there must be someone who, who let's say concentrate or uh, bring all the pieces of the cake so far in, into shape and make a, a attractive offer. 
What I yeah. heard so far and the first calculations we did, also maybe interested um, for you or interesting for you, mm -hmm. there will be, um, if you would uh, use a 22 kilowatt charger uh, AC, for example, then you can estimate uh, something like revenues of roughly, I would say, 60 euros even uh, per month. It's possible. Yeah. Um, so that's an average what we have calculated but it could be much higher depending on the behaviors of the, the drivers. If someone is only driving, let's say, one hour a day uh, to uh, to the office and back, and the rest of the time the car has been, been parked and been connected, then why shouldn't I use the, the energy? So that's, that, that's exactly yeah. the, the use case and send it back when he needs it. Uh, if you know that he's only, let's say, commuting 22 kilometers a, a day, uh, from office uh, and 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 back. So this is a, I would say, not the normal rate, but in Germany it's something like 28 kilometers. What uh, exactly. well, someone yeah. driving to to the office is, is permanently doing. So that that's the case, True. I would say. And but I would see uh, the first activities, well, more attractive activities in in big fleets. So with the three and a half ton trucks with larger batteries which are, for example, not driving the whole day, uh, only, let's say, in the morning times, delivery something, well, we could imagine everything from food to whatever, um, mm. to, to somewhere and driving back uh, to the depot, then the rest of the day, uh, well, they idle. And uh, I think these are the, the attractive business models from my side, which will be kind of a ramp up or I don't want to say game changer, but uh, that we you will see that the business will be accepted uh, the easiest way or earlier than than thinking about mass market of homes being being is uh, equipped with with bidirectional hardware and a bidirectional backend system as well because the backend system must carry on these functionalities mm -hmm. and at the moment uh, as you know um, you can't uh, take. Well, not all ACE OCPP protocols for that. So 1.6 is not upgradable to, to yes. a bi-directional charging or, uh, opportunity. So at least you need a, a backend system which can handle this. And this is at the moment uh, the version of 2.0.1 slash 20. Um, that's also a topic because a backend provider has to invest into a new backend system. And that's... Uh, a little bit pain, I would say, even mm -hmm. if it's not upgradable. So you have to build a new one um, because not all functionalities of 2.0 you can even downgrade. So that's, uh, I would say, one one major topic. What you see? Yeah, yeah, it's totally. We're discussing every day actually these things with our customers. Um, the, the communication protocols, new standards happening. You know, the new IC. Um, just, just yeah, should be implemented by everyone. I think in the next um, 12 months for sure uh, will be will help a lot. Um, but then I think another very big question that we have with our customers, I think you're running into the same things, is who will be managing the the, the piloting or the controlling of this EV charging? I think it's one of the big big question will be the energy company, the energy retailer, third parties, the automakers, the, the CPO. It's, it's really a complex ecosystem. I think nobody has the, the final answer, but I'm very curious to see to see your point here. Well, it's a good, good question. I would say the one who who feels that he can work with the data. So that's a, yeah. that's a question on that, <laughs> uh, because you're collecting data from customers. And if you want to become a data owner and you were, will well, that, that's the, the, the topic. Then uh, it's your, uh, let's say, turf where you have to walk on or you have to go forward. Um, handling the data of customers, uh, work with the data, uh, doing optimization of this network you build as well. So it's not only a static uh, model. So yeah. there will be daily changes of behaviorals of, of customers and, and usage. And I think that that's a, a challenge because you, you need at least at the end of the day, uh, a kind of an AI approach. So the system must be so clever and tell the customer, hey, please uh, plug your your car to the charger and um, <laughs> we want to take something from you or we want to give you something back. So I think this is uh, the AI model or the uh, well artificial intelligence behind you have to take care on 
And that is uh, the challenging thing. Um, and well, you know, um, if you take a look on energy uh, util or energy suppliers or utilities and so on, well, they have really big data databases. They have huge ERP systems. There, it, I would say it's it's a little bit complicated to get all the data in and get the data out of these systems or combine, let's say, these old uh, holistic or let's say more uh, silo orientated um, um, architectures uh, with with the least, let's say, um, well, uh, jumping data. So or well, very uh, active uh, transferred data. So this is a topic, I would say, um, and even if you talk about real time, then I would say, well, a CPO could be the... Yeah, it's also important to involve them because it has to be very fast and for some use exactly. cases. And so, and the same you will see on the OEM side, they are interested in, well, in these business models, but more or less, well, getting a little bit more data and information about what your what the customer or their customer is doing and the behaviorals on on the car and maybe offering a combined uh let's say energy tariff uh, what tesla did for example or offering let's say the the functionalities which are also requested uh at the moment um well uh tariff models uh, which are adapted to a specific usage of car, home, and uh, what you're doing so far. Um, I think this is a, a topic and as well, well, offering, let's say, um, well, uh, yeah, prices which are movable so far. Um, tell yeah. the, the customer, hey, please collect or uh, connect your car uh, at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. And you will get a discount of 20 percent or something like that because energy is cheap at this time <laughs> i think there are opportunities but i would say that more or less the kind of a cpo of our platform provider um is, is more able or better fitted to get these running and not let's say an yeah. OEM or a big utility which is behind which is more or less more interested maybe only to to sell the energy or buy the energy from from uh, a household which is uh, using PV or photovoltaics mm -hmm. and can give it up, up out for a few cents and they can sell it for let's say 38 or 30 cents um, in average. Yeah, yeah. So that, I see that, like that's, the... a, that's I would say the model what what is uh, well the look well, where it's going to. Uh, yeah. No, I see. I see. For fully agree, the utility or energy retailers would be. Definitely have a big role there, but uh, involving the CPO is fundamental. And uh, do you see any other um, ro roadblocks uh, to 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 getting in the way of this changing of this paradigm shift? Something that could uh, slow down this evolution? Or uh, I well, think yeah. like yeah, every well. entrepreneur, you should be pretty optimistic, yeah. like like I am. But there should always be like. Um, so yeah, from my side, it's always you must be on the right time in the right market with the right product at the end of the day. And I think this is uh, also the important thing uh, for for well companies which are offering these kind of services in the future. So there are markets where I would say, well, they are not fitted really because the, mm -hmm. I would say the well the, the grade of digitalization uh, is, is has not that level where I would say well it, it, it makes sense to to offer a digital product to uh, to a customer which has not reached a kind of a level uh, where well he's able to to uh, make some well some money with that uh, business um, so on the consumer side mainly I would say uh, this is a topic uh, on the other side you see that some markets already uh, are, consolidate, are consolidating um, on the hardware and even on the software side. Um, you see that uh, big players are trying to catch, uh, let's say, smaller ones or grabbing uh, also competitors. I think mm -hmm. this is a typical way what you also have seen in the past if you were involved in activities in the IoT space. It's similar. So we had lots of platforms running uh, 10 years ago, roughly, I would say worldwide, something like 250. And over the years, uh, well, on demand or there was a specification or specialization on 
on specific targets, markets, and so on, you see that, uh, well, the platform has reduced to roughly 100, uh, so it's going down and uh, even become more specified on specific markets. So one are only doing, let's say, working on the manufacturing side, next one on, on automotive, the next one is doing more, let's say, consumer driven uh, activities. I think that that will happen here as well. Or that's what you see right now on the CPO side. and. Um, there will be consolidation or they already have started um, maybe yeah. heard we've seen that in the market large players like has to be were bought but by much much larger players like charge point um yeah that that's a, a challenge at the moment and therefore you see that uh while it's also a kind of a platform consolidation coming up and at the end of the day i would say uh the company with the best offer uh will win the race and that means uh, you have to be customer orientated or you have the right, uh, let's say, customer experience running. Um, that means attractive on the app side as well as on, on <laughs> well we added services to offer a little bit more than only, let's say, charging. Um, and so that's a topic where I would say that especially in these segments, there are lots of opportunities still open. So maybe you have seen that there's some players try to optimize the, the charging experience by while well, building a mini supermarket beside or something like that, uh, kind of a takeaway offer with a well kind of a McDonald's approach. You go to a terminal, you select and get out 250 different uh, uh, well kind of, of meals and, and food and whatever. So I think uh, that that's where the trend goes to uh, that uh, we see kind of optimization on, on the on the network side. And that also is relevant for, let's say, these kind of B2G activities. Um, we will see this as well. There will be specialists coming up, focusing on this business, and there will be non-specialists focusing on the pure charging or pure, let's say, uh, battery storage uh, business, optimizing uh, the storage on the one hand side and on the other side, doing some photovoltaic things. I think there will be a kind of consolidation um, or is still has still started um, not on V2G because uh, this is brand new say like this or just coming mm -hmm. but on the yeah. traditional things like charging and uh, everything what is around this ecosystem. No, I totally I totally see it as it's, it's just a market that is still in the early phase so consolidation is fundamental and to make it massive you have to be very big have a very scalable value proposition and I also fully agree with the, the customer experience which is it's super important because it has to be really seamless for the end users they just make savings or even profits out yep. of the vehicles but the comfort is fully guaranteed and uh, because at the end of the day if they don't agree to use your service you, you cannot do anything with this optimization um, cool I think it's it has been very cool to, to chat with you Wolf again uh, I think this uh, wraps up our session for today with Wolf. Thanks so much again for sharing about your um, uh, forecast and expectation about the future of electric vehicles and smart charging and vehicle to grid. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody, for following us. Uh, be sure to catch uh, our next episode. Thank you. Thanks, Gianluca. And uh, yeah, <laughs> well, gonna see you soon, I'm, I'm sure, somewhere. Yep, for sure. <laughs> Take care. And have a great time and uh well happy new year very soon <laughs> you too see you too Thank bye you bye, bye.